what do you do for weed control if you have conventional soybeans? Look, we have so many great post-emerge options for many crops, but the problem with soybeans is it's a broadleaf crop, and quite often we have many broadleaf weeds in that broadleaf crop, and there aren't a lot of great post-emerge options. So we're gonna talk today about what the best plan for your farm is. Oh, and by the way, when I say conventional beans, hey, if you raise Roundup 2 beans and you're stuck on Roundup 2 beans for one more year, I'm talking to you as well, because if you have Roundup resistant weeds in Roundup 2 soybeans, in effect, you're back to conventional beans as well. I don't really care what kind of beans you're raising. It all starts with a good pre-emerge herbicide program. Here's the thing about soybeans, they're a broadleaf crop and most of the tough weeds that we're fighting in that broadleaf crop are broadleaf weeds. And the best killers for broadleaf weeds and soybeans are all pre-emerge options. So we've got things like the yellows, for example, Treflan, Sonalan, and Prowl that are thought of as, wow, those are excellent grass control products, and they are. You really do want to use those for grass control, but they also have a high level of small seeded broadleaf control too. So things like pigweed species, lamb's quarters, and other small seeded broadleaves, in most of the country, these products do a nice job controlling them. Another pre-emerge herbicide that we really like to use is metribuzin. Metribuzin is very strong on these small seeded broadleaves, has some activity on large seeded broadleaves as well. And the other thing is it's one of those modes of action that you just can't use post-emerge, just like the yellows. So you can use it pre and control quite a few of the broadleaves. We've seen metribuzin become just a standard recommendation in some parts of the country where we're fighting resistant weeds. All right, well, you probably figured out by now, Darren is leading you down the path of the three pre's which we talk about all the time. Use a yellow, use metribuzin, and then use either Authority or Valor, one of those two PPOs. Okay, that's absolutely what we want you to do pre, and if you're raising conventional beans and don't want to do that, my advice usually is don't plant conventional beans, and I'm dead serious about that. It's the same type of discussion I have with the sunflower guys when they don't want to use Spartan plus one of the yellows. You have to do everything possible to get weed control pre-emerge in conventional soybeans or in Roundup soybeans now with Roundup resistant weeds. If you don't, you're gonna spend more money post and you're gonna be unhappy. Because let's face it, post-emerge, what are our best options? Sure, you can use Flexstar, but you can't use much or you have carryover. Uh, sure, you can go ahead and use Cobra, but Cobra is expensive and it's going to burn the beans. Flexstar, for that matter, will burn the beans as well. You've got other products out there too. Ultra Blazer, eh, it's okay, but again, you're going to burn the beans. So what are you going to do? Also, you start looking at, hey, some of these products are very specific, like First Rate. Yeah, it's going to help you on cocklebur, sunflower, and ragweed, but is it going to get your water hemp? No. Is it going to get your kochia? No. So then you have to throw something else with it. So what I'm trying to say here is you run into a lot of tank mix issues, you run into a lot of leaf burn, and a lot of expense if you don't get those three pre's down. All right, let's talk about the Roundup Ready soybean users as well and kind of compare and contrast here. Now you may say, wow, if Roundup doesn't work, it's like I don't have that post-emerge option. You still do have that Roundup in your post-emerge program. You've got it for controlling any escaped grasses. You've got it for controlling quite a few different weed species out there. So it is a good helper to mix in with a Flexstar or something like that. So I wouldn't say, hey, let's just leave the Roundup out of the tank because it doesn't kill my pigweed. No, don't forget about all those other little weeds that are out there in your field. All right, one last thing that I wanted to throw in is you can use a residual herbicide early post. So when you go out early post and spray your Flexstar, First Rate, Cobra, anything like that, just look at the label, make sure the product's on label for the mix you're going to do. But I would suggest you throw a group 15 out there, something like Zidua, Warrant, Dual, Outlook, one of those types of products. They're not gonna kill any emerged weeds but they will give you longer late season residual in the soil for a number of different broad leaves and grasses. So those products are all much less expensive than they were a few years ago. You can add one of those in early post. That's a, a good way to economically get more weed control later in the season. Because remember with soybeans, you don't get crop canopy as early as you do in many other crops, which is why you have to have a lot longer control in soybeans than you do almost in anything else. Hey, and the last comment I'd make, if you wanna have conventional soybeans in your rotation, that's fine. Just make sure you're doing an unbelievably awesome job controlling weeds in all your other crops. That way you have less pressure once you get to your conventional soybean part of the rotation where you just don't have many weed control options. Well, one of those weeds you may see out in your field is our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to control it coming up next.